Okay, the subject of this uh, video is uh, rubber fuel cells. This happens to be in a 1965 uh, Piper Comanche. There's a brand new uh, fuel cell ready to install. This airplane happens to have a main and an aux tank in each wing, uh, but it's not just Comanches, uh, Bonanzas, Cessnas, uh, many other general aviation airplanes have the same type of uh, rubber fuel cells. So the fuel cell is going to go in this cavity, the aux tank will go in this cavity. And we've got the old one pulled out already. In here, we've got to clean this up some more. We're going to retape the areas. The tape actually protects the fuel cell from sharp areas and rivets. Down there is the uh, fuel inlet to the airplane, that line right there, which the fuel cell will hook up to. So, show you a little bit of the inlet there. And like I say, we'll go through and clean this up, put in new tape and tape off all the possible sharp areas that uh, line up there is for the fuel tank vent. And what goes on top of this is a, there's an adapter plate that will bolt down to the top of the fuel cell here with a gasket. And this is the main tank which we've already finished and it'll um, the adapter plate will go up to here and it's held in with just a couple little screws here and then once the outside uh, inspection plate goes on that'll that'll complete the process. Um, there's a fuel quantity for the fuel quantity gauge Sent sender goes here and the fuel cap goes here and there'll be a little door to open to get that to the fuel cap. Okay, this is a new fuel cell and what I want to show here is just how pliable it is. It's nice flexible rubber. This has actually got a, uh, a fabric in between a couple plies and it's just very very flexible and it's held up into the top of the wing by these these type of clips which go in underneath here and then clip into a, a receptacle on the top of the wing. Now the fuel cells we pulled out of this airplane out of the mains uh, according to the logbooks, they had not been changed. We think they may have been, but it was quite a long time ago. And these were some of the worst ones we've ever seen. These have the consistency of hard plastic. We usually don't have to cut them to get them out. But it's so hard, we couldn't really hold it. And you can hear it breaking. So it does not have the consistency of a new fuel cell anymore. The reason we're not, we don't think these are original is that um, Piper normally had a part number printed out of the date of manufacture and we couldn't find that anywhere on these. So we think these might have been changed years ago. Here's another piece of it. And uh, like I said, we had to cut this to get it out. Here's the, the top plate and you can see how bad it was cracking. And this cell was starting to leak when the fuel tank was full because the tops of the fuel tanks will, well, if they're not immersed in fuel, they'll, they'll get dried out and they'll start to crack. So this tank uh, here was leaking. Actually, both aux tanks on the airplane here were leaking. And um, when we got the tanks defueled and started to pull the tank out, um, that's when we discovered that, uh, well, it was just, uh, had the consistency of hard plastic and we actually had to cut it in pieces to get it out which is usually not the norm. So this uh, one lived way beyond its life and was just starting to leak from the top there. It wasn't real real bad but it was starting to show signs of leakage. So you can see there again this is nice and flexible. This will actually fold up enough so that we can get it in through this hole and um, which is the only way to put the put the uh, fuel cell in. So Anyways, we found uh, a lot of airplanes, Vipers and Bonanzas, still flying around with original fuel cells. And uh, if they're not leaking, they're, they're probably still okay. Um, but uh, you need to watch for the uh, signs and symptoms. Uh, staining, smells, fuel smell in the cockpit is a big one. And, uh, you know, and have caution with it. And uh, they've been in here for a lot of these airplanes for 40, 50, 60 years. And... If you get to the point where they're leaking and uh, they're causing uh, issues, it's time to change them. They've outlasted their, their uh, they've, they've lasted a lot longer than a lot of people thought they would. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Just a quick little synopsis of 
what goes into how, what a fuel cell is and uh, you know, how we change it. Thank you.